Meghan Markle and Prince Harry cannot give up their vile habit of jumping into another unrelated issue to attract attention. However, it seems that this time the consequences for the rogue couple are not small. Continuously, the media punched the couple mercilessly. And I'm happy to bring this information to you in detail. Very pleased and happy to welcome you back to the Royal News 365 channel. As we know, last week, Harry and Meghan were strangely silent when the African Park scandal was exposed. However, they are quick to speak up about children's safety online and jump into another unrelated bandwagon in the online space. And today, the duo are ripped to shreds for jumping on yet another bandwagon. Respected British journalist and theater critic Quentin Letts lays out what everyone's thinking. He said, along with the unfortunate, droopy-tailed Harry, the Duchess is a devotee of California psychobabble and of anxieties being worn as social and political badges. Look at me, Z say. I'm sensitive. I'm not a viciously ambitious multi-millionaire West Coast actress cynically adopting positions for career purposes. I'm a genuinely humble, vulnerable, touchy-feely soul. And if you suggest otherwise, my attorneys will bust your ass. If British politicians issued the sort of emetic press releases that Harry and Meghan do, they would be swiftly denounced for gross misjudgment and for trying to surf on other people's misery. The Sussexes may think that their press releases are powerful and poetic. To British tastes, they will, possibly, more likely, look manipulative and opportunistic. Whoever writes them has the prose style of a schoolgirl diarist. This paragraph really caught my attention or take this corker. I'm confident, said Megan, again on mental health, that with more ears and awareness and visibility of what is really happening, we can make some significant change together. More ears? Are two not enough for anyone? Are any actually involved parents out there who don't know about the bullying and cyberbullying problems out there? It's a topic of regular discussion among all the parents I know. Do the Carparkles live in a vacuum? The fact that she makes no effort to address her sugar's extreme bullying pays for bots and uses dozens of fake accounts to further cyberbullying makes the statement even more ironic and disgusting. If she was school-aged, she'd be the first one expelled. But the madame somehow thinks she's the lone savior by bringing this issue forward for the first time and the only reason cyberbullying hasn't been stopped is because parents are clueless. They're not. The problem is profoundly complex, but lack of awareness is not the cause or even the core issue. Does she do any parenting? In fact, she tries to make every little thing sound profound, like a 12-year-old doing a creative writing project she uses six adjectives where one would have been appropriate. Everything is overcolored in, but there are no stable outlines. It just spews over the page at you. Every time I hear or read something of hers, my very first thought is verbal diarrhea. She should get that scene, too. You can tell from her writing that Carpark Markle has never had a real job. She doesn't understand in a real job flowery words don't count. My bosses wanted only the facts. All the rest is a waste of their time and mine. Rachel often reminds me of the timeless styling tip from Coco Chanel. Once you've put on all of your accessories... Take one off. Our saint needs to take several off both with her actual jewelry, those stupid bracelets and pinky rings, and with her words. By the way, I never heard of Megan before the engagement. I didn't Google her, really couldn't care less. Then I saw a clip of the engagement interview. It was the part where she was glomming onto his arm, looking at him like a lovesick 12-year-old, and said she asked if he was kind. Vomit. Then I started reading excerpts from some of her speeches. For a long time, I thought there was something wrong with me. I had read them multiple times and not really be able to understand what she was saying. The first time someone said word salad in reference to her, I was so relieved that I probably hadn't had a stroke or didn't have early Alzheimer's. Then I realized after watching one of her interviews with Larry King that she was the buzzword queen and she used the word interesting about 35 times in the interview and pretty much said nothing. 
It was interesting that after most of the men in a country were massacred by rebels, women ran for office. How do you find the tragedy of the men who were husbands, brothers, and sons being massacred interesting? Well, at least she is not only a buzzkill, she is the buzzword salad queen. Don't get me started on all the hand gestures she uses like they're going to help you understand what she's talking about. It just shows her octopus arms and her claws. She had the minimum of skills to apply for a minority place. Her lack of education is shocking for someone who went to a private school and university. She had the same help that Harry had in Eton. Harry used his family tag while Meghan used her race card, but never let anyone know around her to know that. They are both very similar in their educational path and in their limited knowledge. They always jump on the bandwagon like they're A, experts, and B, the first people to have discovered the issue. It really is endlessly astonishing that nothing, no amount of failure or criticism, ever stops them. Every single thing from the second they've left the UK has been a disaster. More sadly, they always jump on the bandwagon so damn late, it's embarrassing. Like, hello! These various topics of concern have been discussed by actual experts and everyone else for years now. If anyone isn't listening, they sure as hell aren't suddenly going to start just because Meghan Markle slithers in. They never outline any meaningful action, just toxic positivity bullshit. Stand in your truth is just reinforcing victim mentality as some kind of worthy persona. They don't know, haven't thought about it, and don't really care. It's just something to get their faces in the news. In fact, they are always sure to put out their verbal diarrhea about whatever latest bandwagon issue, but they never put any action behind it. That is what reveals their true motivation. Get credit for being humanitarians without actually getting their hands dirty doing the real work. They're like the archifail of social change. They're not there to actually do anything. Their job is only to shine a light on the issues, watch other people do the work, and then step up and take credit for the changes. It doesn't do anything except redistribute minuscule amounts to real charities, then claim their partners and take credit for the end results. Like, why? Why give to Archwell when you can bypass the middleman and just give directly to the charities that they fund? These two absolutely suck at fundraising and philanthropy especially when a lot of that money is being funneled back into their other charities and Doria's nursing home scam. They're opening even more tax shelters and charities in Delaware. They're nothing more than tax-dodging criminals. Not only that, but Megan is enough of a hypocrite about the vitriol that her sugars put out to say that they are expressing their truth. And she makes a big deal about being a mother. So the sugars don't harass or lie or cyberbully, and anyway, it's not against little children. Conveniently blind and deaf when sugars make comments about the whale's children. Expect no logic or mercy from narcissists. When you couple their eye-watering hypocrisy of preaching compassion and kindness when their own behavior has been so hateful to their own families, the public and the media who they're constantly suing, spewing venom for years, and lying about being badly treated, it makes people really, really angry, especially if they've had someone causing similar havoc in their own lives. I guess I will just say it, I hate them. There is nothing unchristian about this, I decided. They say hate the sin, not the sinner. Um, no? So much philosophical discussions can be put to this problem. I go by my own feelings of fairness and goodness. My own love of Queen Elizabeth II my own hope for King Charles III, and my respect for William and Catherine, my disgust of Harry and Meghan. I just can't describe it in a short video, but there you go. Gut feelings. Another issue is, what exactly do they gain by associating themselves with these virtuous causes? Do they think that some hedge fund billionaire or movie producer mogul is going to dump $50 million into Archual Foundation because they wore some expensive clothes and talked word salad about how we all should strive to do better? Seriously, what makes Todger, the racist, an expert in anything? What makes Meghan Markle, the bit-part TV actress, a humanitarian and expert? 
Why are they so pompous and arrogant? Why do they pretend that in America they are better than their fellow men? We are a democratic republic, so nobody cares what they publish on their website about their personal views on societal ills. Plus, Harry and Meghan know nothing about losing a child and shouldn't be giving stupid, empty advice about something they know nothing about, but that's all they do every day and twice on Sunday. I found it vile when she told those grieving parents that being a mother was the most important thing. To her, and then her stupid example about cars and seatbelts. The clueless fool and disgusting user. When will someone, anyone, put a stop to this disturbing charade? That's what they do with every issue, act like the experts. When other people attend these types of things, they try to listen and learn. You could tell all she cared about that day was grabbing the microphone so everyone could see how hot she looked in her inappropriate off-the-shoulder outfit with her nightclub hair and makeup. And I would like to know how much of their own personal money they donated to any charity or cause before trumpeting that they both are philanthropists. If she is posting puff pieces that they don't have money and she is hustling for jobs, how does she turn around and call herself a philanthropist? That is a blatant lie. Melinda Gates, Mackenzie Scott are both great philanthropists. They have money to actively give away. Meghan Markle is piling on to her in-laws and husband for her money, is not worth much on her own, used to live in a tiny apartment before getting married, had no steady job, lost all her lucrative contracts, pedals calming patches for a living, but bullshits about being philanthropic. They are still desperately trying to justify their decisions. They were so sure they could pull out on their own and show the royals how to do humanitarian service for fun and profit. Unfortunately, they've shown themselves to be too self-centered to be humanitarians and too inept for meaningful service. They do seem to be persistent. The whole thing is a mirage, a fake charity scam like many others. I keep waiting for a deep dive by someone into their finances. Maybe now that Archwell has been described as a sinking ship, more will come out. They could start with which elephant sanctuary received the three million dollars she promised after that awful voiceover? Where did that end up? In the till at Carolina Herrera. We know their press releases are manipulative and opportunistic. These two dimwits have shown what they really are about. It may have took some people longer than others to see it, but America has had enough of their crap too. Even with Meghan's alleged experience, the media making her so-called suicidal, she hasn't mentioned how it's harmed her explicitly since Oprah, and only vaguely in the cut can't. Still healing. What a shame the incomparable Mr. Letts missed the opportunity to make an association between the Sussexes' compulsive bandwagoning via public statements on the Archiewell website and Meg Hall's PR trip to Uvalde. Quite possibly the most disgusting thing out of the many, many disgusting things that evil bitch has done. On the other hand, that's also Megan's entire personality wrapped up in a bow. I... I... Mean girl, school girl diarist, she never matured emotionally past the age of about 14, and it shows in just about everything she does. Very unsophisticated thinker and operator. It's another one of her pathological lies to stop criticism of her atrocious behavior. It's not me. It's the evil, racist press and social media making things up. Because, see, I'm a humanitarian. Everyone seemed to have had a gutful of being preached to by celebrities about kindness and compassion when their own behavior falls way short of the mark, Ellen, etc., and their nauseating preaching at the Oscars while turning a blind eye to Einstein for decades. No one wants to listen to Harry and Meghan's bullshit about kindness after the extreme nastiness they've dished out on their own families. Moreover, the British stiff upper lip is a cliché, but this is a country that knows to carry on with actions rather than words. When Meghan and Harry do speak, it's about how they are feeling or thinking, and the self-importance translates into overblown prose in a royal color. Being a British prince wasn't satisfactory for Prince Harry. Now he's reaching to change himself into something like his wife, who is not just foreign to the UK, but pretty alien to much of the rest of the world. 
Many Americans and Californians don't see Megan as a representative. She has united us in a collective feeling that she's someone we don't want to be like. That what she says never had a basis of sincerity to it or genuine depth of compassion or empathy. Everyone can see she doesn't care one bit about anyone she's talking to, veterans, grieving parents, it's all an act. She represents the worst of the attention-seeking, woke virtue signaler by monetizing everything she does. The train has left the station, Megzi. Far too many people now see you for who and what you are. You cannot recover that which was given to you by the royal family, the family you trashed, ridiculed, and disrespected. The world has watched this closely. You stupidly believed in your silly and demented hubris that you had some type of amazing ability. The silly cartoon she raw power to. What, exactly? What did you possibly believe you were capable of doing? K.C. 3 has years and years and years on you, achieving a network of powerful friends, statesmen, and allies the world over. Little O, you would never stand a chance against such a formidable force. And to... Much surprise, you've come to learn how much King Charles III is really admired, and liked, if not loved. You stupidly believed your dimwit husband's drivel, his defamatory rantings against his own father, spewed in his blind hatred and further colored by his demented, drug-addled brain. The train left the station long ago. While your scratching and clawing of yesteryear resulted in opening certain doors, that was then, darling, your old scratching and clawing methods have turned to pathetic whining and beseeching, resulting in mockery. You're now a caricature of yourself. For Harry, it must be his version of the way of life. All he knew was to be the face of things and make some speeches. He didn't think about it any deeper than that. He's trying to carry on with the only thing he knows, but without all the brains behind the curtain, gray suits, royal staff, he's failing miserably. Until the stupid step up and release a statement about Africa Parks, nothing he says is worth a scintilla of our attention. No, make that! Until Prince Plank comes forward and makes a public, personal statement, aligning himself with the Baca people, condemning the rangers involved and demanding they be punished for their actions. Nothing they say is worth a moment of our attention. Finally, so well written and covers all the bases criticize us, and we'll sue but we can say what we want, and calling her out for her atrocious writing. I'm sure that hit hard as she obviously thinks she's a truly gifted writer and orator. They can't even claim to have personal experience because their kids are too young to be on the internet and Harry and Meghan themselves are too old they didn't grow up with the internet and mobile phones of today. What a mess! Just exposes them to further scrutiny for saying and doing nothing regarding the African Park scandal, of which Harry is a freaking board member. Children aren't being taught the correct way to do anything and when it is appropriate to do so. A short text to your buddy is fine. You can use social media shorthand all you want, but writing an essay for a grade requires proper spelling, punctuation, and grammar. It's the same thing with appearance. The clothing and makeup you wear to the club aren't appropriate for the office or school. But sadly, we don't teach this stuff anymore. They don't teach handwriting slash cursive in school any longer. My oldest had a high school English teacher who was on a one-woman mission to save the art of handwriting. She required all papers to be handwritten in cursive. She had to have a cursive chart in her classroom for anything written in class. With the exception of their name, neither of my kids can read or write cursive, nor can they write well, since padding was necessary since word count was a requirement, a terrible way to teach writing in my opinion. Our content will stop here. How do you feel about rogue couple Harry and Meghan? Let's discuss with others in the comments section. Don't hesitate to share this video of mine with everyone, and do you remember when I said that YouTube's algorithm likes videos with lots of interaction? Please lend a hand to help Royal News 365 channel develop further. Thanks for watching. Goodbye and see you tomorrow.